How's it going everyone? Bo here from BZ Hub giving you an exclusive first look at Hunting Simulator 2 on PC. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you've been following us for the past few weeks, then you probably know that we have been playing the previous Hunting Simulator from beginning to end in order to truly see the improvements made on this second game. So if you're not subscribed to the BZ Hub and you have any interest at all in this game or outdoor games in general, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll be sure to see all of the following videos for Hunting Simulator 2 and the like. So we're at the main menu now. I figured for this first look at the game, we would just take you through some of what you might experience when you're playing the game for the first time. I should add that this is only the press release version of the game, so we shouldn't have everything available to us at the moment, but enough to test the game and get a good idea about what it's all about. Let's go ahead and hit the new game button here. Yes, we're going to go ahead and delete my practice version. We, uh, we can choose between a female and a male here. Let's go ahead and uh, hit this guy. He already kind of looks like me. Select this character, yes. And we're going to be kind of put into like a tutorial mission here. Rise and shine. It's a big day. Time for you to participate in your first hunt. I'll be guiding you from a distance and giving out some tips as you go. Are you ready to take on the elements? Okay then. Let's get started, shall we? Would you mind stepping out of your cabin and taking in that fresh scent of nature? All right. Now let's get down to business. There should be some tracks nearby. Walk around a little, you should be able to find some. I will say that uh, this is the only time that I have experienced where they actually show you where some tracks are. Um, other times you'll be given track locations, it's because your, uh, your little doggo will tell you. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and find these tracks here. There we go! You found your first track. Now, you're gonna have to analyze this track if you want to know what kind of animal we're hunting today. Ho ho ho! The fabled white-tailed deer. A classic. Okay. So we know it's a white tail. We don't have a license or a weapon for it yet. Would you mind marking this location on your map and then returning to the cabin? I'll get you the right license and weapon for when you get there. So you heard that right there. Um, as we try to put a mar map marker right here for the white tailed deer. Um, basically, you're able to buy tags, and uh, you can shoot so many animals under those tags as well. But we'll see that here in a bit when we get to the store again. Let's go back into the cabin. Okay, I think you're ready to go hunt that whitetail now. Oh wait, before you head out, I got you a little surprise. That's right, it's your very own hunting beagle. Why don't you go ahead and give the dog a name? Give the dog a name. Um, so if you're if you're new to the channel, you don't know this, but if you are part of the BZ Hub, then you know my dog's name is Bjorn. But uh, we can't replace him, so we're gonna go with Bjorn too. <laughs> yes. That's an awesome name. That's an awesome I name. I agree. My old border collie. Okay. So let's get back to those traps. Check your map to find the marker you placed. Okay. Well, here's our map. I'm annoyed that the only way to move the map is by dragging on the corners, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Let's go. Uh, we already know where the tracks are, but I thought we'd follow his advice. Here are the tracks, and we're going to get our doggo to uh, follow him. Oh, dog found the track. Good Come on, Bjorn, job. too. You should praise them for doing a good job. This will increase their drive good and make job. them more obedient. Now that you have your dog with you, you can instruct them to follow a trail from this track. If the dog is following the trail, they'll go to the next track and wait for your next instructions. Give it a try. Oh, we can pet him? Good dog. Whoa! <laughs> a boy, Bjorn too. All right, go. go ahead and track this whitetail. Let's uh, let's go find this guy. Okay, let's keep following this trail for a bit. I'm sure you'll run into something eventually. I'm sure we will too, narrator. 
Bjorn 2's on the trail. Oh, he found some tracks. I will say that when you're hunting um, regularly, your dog will stop at every single track he finds, um, which is a slow process. But I will say, Hunting unless you're in an open area, game. you need to have nerves of steel and an incredible amount of patience. If you keep following the tracks, though, you're bound to run into an animal eventually. Too true. Um, anywho. The tracks, as you can tell, are very difficult to see in all this foliage. Um, I mean, we just walked over some. Can you tell where they are? Because they're right there. <laughs> and unless it was shining, I would have never saw them. So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty handy to have this little beagle running around with you if you're hunting big game. So you can uh, find the tracks for them. Otherwise, uh, the chances of finding the tracks are slim to none. And you're going to have to pick off an animal way far away. What was that? Not an animal. Okay. <laughs> thought we got lucky for some reason. Come on, Bjorn, too. There to stand. Why don't you get a little closer? Okay. We'll get closer to the stand. You can see the stamina bar down at the bottom left. It is weird that you don't always see it. Okay. Now all you have to do is climb into it. There you go. Now that you're in a stand, it's time to play the waiting game. You don't have to wait for the stand, but it gives you a nice vantage point and makes you less noticeable. Okay, let's wait a bit more. My instinct is telling me something good is about to happen. There, a white-tailed deer. Don't shoot it just yet. You need to carefully plan your shot. Take a deep breath Aim for its vital organs. Ooh. Wait for it. Wait for it. Now, take the shot. Good job. Got him. You got that deer good. Now, get out of the stand. Go find the blood trail. Get to always memorize the location where you shot the animal. That is pretty big. Um, I shot many a duck and goose that I could not find because it landed and I could not see where it landed. Unlike Hunting Simulator, it doesn't tell you... Gosh dang it. You darn map. Um, it doesn't tell you where you shot them or where they died or anything like that. So that is kind of interesting. It may have strayed off a bit. There should be a blood trail where you shot it. There okay. we go. Take a good look at that blood. Now, just follow it or have the dog trail. Found some more. Got these like magenta flowers. Kind of making it a little more difficult. Hello there, Bjorn 2. It shouldn't be too far now. There it is! You did it! Hey. All you have to do now is bag it and bring it on back to the cabin. Let's get a close look at our first whitetail here. So you can see the uh, the antlers look pretty good. I like the texture on the antlers there. Um, but, you know, it's so-so. The big ol' eye there, that's a big ol' eye. And uh, it looks kind of like a pinata, a big fury, fury pinata. Bjorn 2's happy about it though. Good job, bud. Good job, you got us our, our deer. Not too shabby, huh? Let's bag this guy. We got him in the lungs there. Uh, region Europe. That doesn't seem quite right, but uh, who am I to judge at this point? Let's go ahead and bag this guy. You can use your map if you're lost. So this is another thing. Every time you um, you shoot an animal, say you're you know you're way over here or something like that, unless you found a tent around here, 
and you shoot an animal around here, you will have to walk all the way back to your cabin before you uh, go to the main menu. So that is uh, a drag at the moment, but it will be interesting to see what they do if they end up changing that or what. I'm all for taking, you know, a hunting game nice and slow and enjoying it and, you know, not rushing around like we do in the Hunter Call of the Wild sometimes, but, uh, I tell you what, you know, a little bit goes a long way. And without any vehicles and with no auto walk key or auto run key on PC, this is a long way to go. So you should notice that the stamina bar isn't always in the bottom left corner, but this uh, half circle here is sometimes more full um, of a circle, and that is going to be your stamina as you're running. You'll see it get less. Wait, did you hear that? Seems there's another animal nearby. It sounds like it's a moose, but you don't have a license for it. It means you won't be able to hunt it. It always pays to get multiple licenses for a region. So you can hunt more than one animal type at a time. Anyways, let's get back to that cabin. <laughs> so yeah, that's a big thing as well. But anyway, you can see that this stamina is in the middle of that with a little circle there, which is handy just to make sure how much energy you have while you're running. And I do know. Now that you're at the cabin, all you have to do is claim the animal and we're done. But first I want to see if I can drive this car. I can't. Turn back. Okay. Ah, drat. How nice would that be? When you claim a bagged animal, you can either trade it in for cash or make a trophy out of it. The choice is yours. Let's uh, go ahead and keep this guy, I think. Good job. You did great today. I think you're ready for your first solo hunt. I know you can do it. Just believe in yourself and be patient. Now. Go back to your lodge. You're ready. Welcome to the hunting lodge. Here you can set up for your hunts and purchase any gear or companions you may need for them. Head over to the computer to access the store and claim your permanent license. Okay. I tell you what, the first time I came into this log this lodge here, the first thing I had to say was that the focal length perspective on your uh, you know your your point of view is actually really cool I mean it really kind of feels like you're inside this this lodge I mean it's it's pretty neat and there is a lot of detail here you can see there's kind of this bar area over here and uh, can we access it right now anyway this bar area acts as a wiki and then your achievements are this globe here maybe we should just wait for now and I can show you later here are the licenses we can get one license for free and uh, knowing what the area is going to be I'm gonna choose the elk license I think actually you know what we might as well just go for the most expensive one we're gonna do that XPR composite we're gonna get the elk tag we're gonna get the uh... oh I'm not sure Let's get the red fox tag. Um, pheasant. Duck. Goose. I'm not sure. Not sure about the rest of them. How about a boar? We'll get a boar as well. Anywho. So you can see on the bottom right corner what uh, weapons are ethical to hunt these animals with. So you can see with the boar and the elk, similar weapons, 308, 270, 30 out 6, um, that sort of thing there. But as we move to uh, smaller animals such as the red fox, the 243 is going to be the maximum that we can use, similar to, you know, uh, when we're hunting in the hunter, hunter Call of the Wild. So we have coyotes, all of that as well. So I'm thinking that a 30 out 6 should be a pretty good all-around weapon though it would be nice to see yep we can use the 30 out 6 or the 308 also on moose so uh, maybe a 308 could also work 
Um, let's look at the weapons here, huh? Here are some of the weapons, and you can see that they don't specify on the caliber right now. Which is pretty cool, because you can see if we click on any one of them, let's go ahead and just click on this one for instance. Now you can choose your caliber that you want. So, say you want, uh, say you like the look of, uh, you know, this rifle. You like this nice wooden stock here, and you think, you know, this would be really nice for my 9.3x62 rifle, so you can make that, but then you can go ahead and say, you know what, I would like a Rec 7 to use for my 223. And that's really the only round that it comes in, is 223 for the Rec 7. So there you go there. Shotguns here, you can see uh, a lot of shotguns, and, um,. No semi-automatics. This one looks like it, but it's actually a manual repeating semi-automatic. Uh, I keep saying semi-automatic, but it's actually ma manual repeating. So it's kind of set up as one, but you have to manually, uh, you know, put each shell into the chamber. But back to here, we need to get a 30-06. So let's go ahead and choose a rather cheap rifle, I think, because uh, <laughs> we want to save some of our money. Even if some of these look really cool, uh, we need to save some of our money. Let's see, what's a good-looking rifle but for a cheap cost? So this one looks nice. We can get it in 308 as well. well let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we got our 308 so we can hunt elk and whatnot. Um, let's see what else we can uh, get. We've got yeah, licenses again. Optics here, you can see they have 2.4 times zoom down to 4.2, and then maximum scope is going to be the 6.0 um, infrared, if you will. Uh, would it be useful to get that? Probably so. Let's get that. That way we'll be able to zoom in. Six zoom really isn't a lot. So it'll be helpful to have that. If we go into the items here, you can see we have binoculars. We can get by with not very much money. We might as well just use our scope for now. There are calls. Um, I haven't really used any calls so far. I've thought about maybe a deer caller, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know at the moment. Um, I'm more focused on being able to hunt things than call them in. Uh, there is clothing, so you can see here there are a number of hats, and actually in the bottom right you can see what weather they're really for, and then the visibility as well. So it kind of makes you wonder if later on, as the weather gets colder, you know, maybe it's uh, they add a tundra map. If, if for some reason they add a tundra map, um, you'll be looking for you know, uh, a hat that is for warm weather or uh, for cold weather. I mean, you'll want it to be warm uh, is what I'm trying to say. And then also you have, you know, vests and uh, jackets, different things here. And uh, also the same thing. So you can see visibility low on this camo, Max 5 camo uh, parka there. So very cool as well. And gloves, pants, you can deck yourself out in camo boots there and then right now we only have two backpacks ahead of a satchel and a backpack really um, but you can see how they actually allow you to carry more items with you so that is helpful um, if you need to carry more calls with you or something that'll do it you can see right now we've only got um, one dog available to us there is a retriever um for ducks and then there's also like a upland bird like kind of um goes up to pheasants and stuff like that and you know um points at them and whatnot i think it's a uh, german pointer or something like that maybe an english pointer something i can't recall i can't recall but anyway we've got our 308 which is good and i think maybe maybe we should uh look for a cheap shotgun here go with one of these bad boys they got the waterfowl and we've got the uh, just the brown this kind of reminds me of my Remington 870 so maybe we should just go with that good deal and that leaves us with some money that we could spend on licenses if we want to let's go ahead and just do that we get the uh, the sheep license we'll get the turkey license we'll get both deer licenses in case we run into them we'll get a cougar license I haven't ran into a bear yet, honestly, but they might come in handy. If we go and if we see one in later videos, then, you know, maybe we'll go back and get that. But uh, let's go ahead and get all these small ones as well, just in case, and uh, that should do it. 
So there you go. We've got most of our stuff and the game is uh, to normal now. You can see we can leave out the door here and go hunt. But we'll take a small trip around the lodge so you can see we actually have our taxidermized whitetail here. What a monster. What a monster. Now I'm assuming all of these plaques around here are for different animals. So that kind of gives you an idea of what kind of how many animals are in the game. Um, but you know I that could be wrong there's not like there's a little plaque underneath that says whitetail deer and, and turkey and all that on all of them so we have no way of knowing at the moment um, you can see here we have maybe an option to change the music there you go Ooh, we can change all oh, different music there a uh, fireplace this is actually where your dog sits Bjorn too sit there buddy um, yeah got a little stand there for something Let's see here. Here's the wiki where if you want to learn about specific things you can see here fines is an interesting thing If you're uh, shooting an animal without a license, you'll get fined if you're shooting an animal too many times You'll get fined shooting a female animal. This is really interesting But uh, you know if that comes up while we're playing then we'll we'll talk about that more Shooting an animal at the wrong caliber of course and not claiming or bagging an animal before returning to your lodge Which is huge when the ducks and geese are so hard to find when they land um, but here's your achievements, like I said before. There's also an upstairs, which just kind of has more uh, plaques and stuff for animals. But this is a cool room. This actually shows you uh, some of your rifles and, and shotguns and whatnot, which is pretty cool. You can see here we can uh, select our weapon. So let's go ahead and maybe uh, put our 308. Here's our 308 here. Good deal there. Got our 308 equipped and a scope for now, and I am interested to know more about when we will unlock weapon two. Um, I don't know if it's tied to a backpack. I guess we could go buy a backpack to see um, if that changes anything. But uh, here we go. We have a shotgun, we have our 308, and we have a 243 in there. And then this is actually pretty cool. This is the Azure Lodge. Azure Lodge. And uh, we can click on it and it'll allow us to see it at a closer view here. But you can see it says you must first claim one of every type of animal, which is pretty cool. And then you can take a close up view of the detail on this weapon, which is just amazing. I mean, it's immaculate. There are just engravings in the wood stock. I have said this. Um, even it was one of my main compliments for the first hunting simulator, how the guns they just spent so much time on the guns. The guns just look amazing. Whoever does the modeling on them, you know, pat on the back to you, sir or madam, or whoever you might be, because uh, you do a great job. Um, yeah, so those are our weapons at the moment, and then you can see in here we have uh, our closet, which looks like we could hit a button and it would, like, you know, reveal some sort of hidden room around here. But uh, here you go, you can see our clothes that we have on right now. We have no gloves, we have some regular boots on here. Um, that's pretty much pretty much it for there for clothing um, and uh, the bed here. Hey, look at this, you can actually change the time of day based off of the, the bed. <laughs> I actually didn't know that uh, from playing it the first time. Anywho, we, uh, yeah, I mean this is pretty much the lodge. It's a nice looking building. I'll give them that much, but I think it's finally time to get out there and start hunting. Here we have uh, Roosevelt Forest and Pawnee Meadows, which are the two maps available to us for Colorado. And uh, on this uh, press release of the game, this is the two maps that are available to us, so we might as well go ahead and do that, which is great. Being in Kansas, Colorado is close by, so this is, this is pretty good. Um, I will say I have hunted in this Roosevelt Forest and it is very slow so I figured just for the point of making this video we might hunting Pawnee Meadows as you can tell by the difference in animals here there are no deer here but there are uh, mountain lions there are elk and uh, you know bighorn sheep there turkeys coyotes fox bobcat um, snowshoe hare I don't know why there's snowshoe hare I didn't know there they were in uh, Colorado and a number of birds so that's pretty cool the one that gets me is the wild boar I never thought of wild boar in Colorado and after looking it up a little bit um, there's actually a thing about Colorado um, claiming that they've eradicated pretty much all the feral hogs 
So that is pretty interesting. Right off the back, we find we find a cougar. Let's see if we can uh, change the loadout real quick. Oh, not the backpack. Yeah, this one. My goodness, a lot of stuff to click through. All right, can we get this cougar? Wrong caliber. We got the 270 out. We can't shoot a we can't shoot a mountain lion with the 270. Oh, that seems weird. Okay, well, guess we'll go back to the 308. Since we don't have any other rifles to shoot them with. <laughs> oh, and I guess we'll uh, look for we'll look for something else, eh? Because we can't shoot this darn mountain lion. What do we got over here? A red fox. Well, we can't shoot a red fox either. How about that? We're gonna have to look for something bigger. As you can tell here, and you've probably been hearing them as well, ducks and geese fly over all the time around this cabin. And they're super loud. They're super loud and they're super hard to find once you shoot them. And uh, I have found that the beagle does not help you track down dead birds, which is unfortunate. But at least that gives, uh, you know, gives a point to the other uh, dogs, you know. Um, so, that's alright, I suppose. Come on, Bjorn2. What do we got right next to our house here? Oh, a little rabbit. A little rabbit. Um, as we get closer to this stand, you'll see something happen. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and do that so you can see what I'm talking about. I wonder what weapon we need for the mountain lions. That is so interesting. We can't use a 270 on a mountain lion. I would have thought we could use a 308 on a mountain lion. Alrighty, we're getting into the stand here. Okay, up in the stand now. And you can see here on our map, as we got this stand, this tower, it's shown up here. And there's actually, let's see if we can spot it. There's actually a tent over here. There it is. There's a tent over there that we can get to become a fast travel point as well. Well, look at this. Got some elk showing up. Small elk, though. Look at that. I went over a rabbit and spotted it. I don't see anything else at the moment. I'm looking around. As wide open as this uh, map is, sure don't see a lot. There's something over there. Bighorn sheep. Ooh, I'd love to get a bighorn sheep. But since we have this elk in front of us, let's go ahead and get this guy. Kind of let him there a little bit. I wonder, oh, he's slowing down. He is slowing down there, buddy. Oh, he's down. He is down. All right, good deal. Let's uh, leave the stand here. Oh, golly. Hope I'm running the right way. So this is, uh, oh, I've already messed up. I've already messed up. Okay, do, 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 do. Right over there. What do we got? Little hair? Where are you? A red fox, okay. Anyway, we're going southeast, basically. 120 degrees. Doo doo. You really have to pay attention to it. A lot more than you think you would have to. Um, I don't know. For some reason, in real life, it's easier to remember where things are. <laughs> I suppose it's because you're uh, used to where you're hunting. But uh, in this game, I have no idea. This map is almost totally new to me. All right, look at this guy. Our first elk. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Little pinata monster. The eyes are pretty big, again, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just making that up. I have no idea. Ooh, the bighorn are getting close to two males. Let's bag this elk here in the lungs. Good shot. Good shot, don't you think so, Bjorn, too? 
And uh, let's set up to uh, shoot these bighorn. I can't really tell which one's bigger, but I'm thinking this one. Dropped him. Oh, he pivoted. Oh, no. Look at that giant rail on there. Okay, he's slowing down. I think that second shot got him in the legs there, but he's slowing down. Usually, in the hunting simulator one, when they slow down to that speed, it means they're about to die. So we shall see what happens there. Let's go track down this uh, first bighorn that we dropped. We dropped him on the spot. Oh no. Water got too deep there. Too deep for us, which is where you get in trouble when you shoot the ducks that land in the water. You know, if we just shot this duck, even even though we can't do it with a rifle, but if we shot it and it landed in the uh, in the water like that, you know, we'd be in trouble. Okay, so we dropped the first big horn. Around here. See the second big horn. Problem is that if we uh, shoot him a second time or a third time, we uh, we they actually fine us for shooting him too many times. See that? So uh, <laughs> you found something. <laughs> I should hope so. You know what? I'll give him this. That's a decent looking big horn. That's a good looking big horn, I think anyway. Um, I'd love a bighorn like this in the Hunter Call of the Wild, but you know, good job hunting simulator. That's a, that's a good, good looking bighorn, I think. Heart and lungs. I mean, you'd expect it to fall after that as well. I am interested about these claim details. I'm sure they're supposed to tell you what they are at the moment, but maybe it's supposed to be more of like a reveal once you get back to the cabin. So uh, after shooting him too many times, you can still go back and uh, pick them up. We do have, we have three foxes in front of us? Four foxes! All of which we cannot hunt. <laughs> we only have one rifle with us. Oh, he's wagging his tail. He says, oh, something's wrong. So I feel like something's getting close to me. <laughs> oh, golly. Here's our second bighorn here. Also a good looking bighorn. Can't really tell which one's bigger though. Mature. Mature big horn. Good deal. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna go grab this um tent. So that I have this tent here. What do we got here? Female elk. See how it tells you female animal. Cannot shoot it. Which is fine. It's just a little frustrating. Especially when you find a female fox and it's like female fox Cannot shoot it and I'm like what it's a female fox though It's a fox How would I have known that without paying a lot of attention? Alrighty, we made it back to the tent. Thank goodness, and we're gonna fast travel back to the cabin And we're here so, so far, we have, um, we have elk and we have a bighorn. Let's go ahead and go into the menu here. See our little character there. Um, here's our elk that we shot and we can actually cycle through 17.2. This one's actually a pretty decent sized one. The one that we shot three times, unfortunately. Oh, but actually the younger one's bigger. 230. Yep, 230 versus 225. How about that? Okay, well, we're gonna keep him because he's bigger. We'll sell the second big horn, the older one, and we'll, um, oh, he wasn't a very big elk. I think we should sell him as well. So there you go. We've claimed our animals there. Now, there's one last thing I want to do before we go back to the lodge, and that is equip this shotgun and show you a little bit of bird hunting. Because it, it could be so fun. It could be so fun. And unfortunately, 
It's just not. And I'll show you what I mean by it. Unfortunately, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to talk over these ducks and geese. Um, fly, ducks. So unfortunately, they didn't change any aiming. This pumpkin's actually better, but as you can see, um, with um, every pumpkin, I guess, with every shotgun. All right, we're gonna do some bird hunting here. God, I'm not gonna be able to talk over these freaking ducks and geese talking so loud. Let's just try to shoot some here. Oh, they just went under the water. I've never seen them do that before. Oh, they're uh, they're emerging. What are you doing, you silly ducks? Sure don't have a lot of uh, reach there. Can we at least find our one duck that we shot? Please? Hey! We actually found it! All right, a green wing teal. Bag. Bag. We got one duck. We got one duck. I'm pretty happy about that. Um. So, anywho, as I'll show you right now, the biggest difference on these shotguns, and this one's not too bad, actually. The shotgun I had before in my first playthrough was pretty bad. Take a look at the center of the screen there. You'll see that circle. I feel like an eye doctor right now. And then when I aim with the pump gun, you'll notice that the bead is actually underneath that circle. And if I aim at a, uh, at a duck that's uh, incoming, it'll actually still shoot at the center of the screen. It won't shoot at the end of the bead like it uh like you'd think it would you know but uh it'll it'll aim at the end of the bead unfortunately I do think we can get a rabbit with this shotgun got him all right got this sh this hair as well we're just getting all sorts of stuff with the shotgun the hardest thing is, of course, you know, finding them afterwards. It seems pretty easy to actually shoot them. Boom! Nailed that one. Too many shots, they said. <laughs> God dang, we got to find $250 for that. So, that's a little crazy on these ducks, I think. So, it's good to see that one of the things I said about the trailer was that, uh... The ducks just land in the water and they don't do anything. They do swim around. But unfortunately, I don't think they do much after that. Too many shots again! What? What are you seeing, umpire? So, you know, I just did an expert move there. Got a bunch of ducks, but I got fined for it. Each of these ducks is like $40, too. So to get fined $250, I'm actually losing money. <laughs> oh, golly. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find this last one. And, um, and they'll find me for that as well. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, the aiming with this pump gun is actually really good. I was using a uh, the manual reload one before this, 
and the sights were way off where it was shooting. It was actually about a half inch lower than where it was shooting. And that's what what really got me with the first hunting game, hunting simulator game. Oh boy, look at this. Got two, which I'm kind of glad because I think if we would have hit them a third time, we would have got fined again. Those are the white fronted geese too. Let's see if we can find this last one. Oh golly. Hey, you got it. Two female geese there, unfortunately. Okay, so we have the green wing tail. We're gonna sell the females here. Um, I think I might have a male already, but we'll we have a lot of green wing teals. We're gonna keep the male white fronted goose there. Nice. Let's go back to the lodge and, and check some of this stuff out. Unbagged animals, yeah, we didn't find a lot of the birds. Some of the birds. Um, I will say that I had $3,400 when I went out to that hunt, and now I have $3,700. So, you know, <laughs> $300, but you know, that's something. And uh, we've got some animals in the trophy. We had our first whitetail that we shot. And then uh, we have Bjorn 2 here, of course. And now we have our green winged teal up there. I don't know if a female is going to be sitting with him at some point. Um, I guess I should have maybe kept one of the females for that reason. Here's our big horn, though. Nice looking sheep there. You know, it's interesting. In the first game, they had a male and female plaque. But in this game, it doesn't seem to be that. It just seems to be one plaque which is kind of interesting there. I guess it's because we're not able to shoot the females, huh? But we are able to shoot a female duck. So I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do that's different between that. Um, here's our one duck. I've always, you know, after playing the first one, I always, or this is the goose. I said to myself, you know, that would be really cool if they could do something like that in the Hunter Call of the Wild. So it's really cool that they put in the detail to do this and the feathers look great. That's a good looking goose, it really is. And then, of course, we had our duck over there, like I said. And I think that should do it. Because we didn't keep the elk. Anywho, I think that's going to do it for this first little, uh, you know, bit of the game there. We uh, went through the whole tutorial. I talked about the weapons. I showed off the lodge. We went out. We hunted a bit. We hunted with rifles. We hunted with shotguns for some birds. Um, I think we covered pretty much everything. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Hey, there's a rabbit. Our rabbits in the in the gun library. How about that? <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it. It's a you know it is. I can see this game being fun. I really do. I, there are some little things I hope that they can tweak, but uh, yeah, will be interesting. Especially if you're just wanting another hunting game to uh, have as a game to take a break. You know, every now and then. Um, you know, from your other games that you're playing. This seems like it could be a pretty fun game. It's got some fun stuff, some fun features. It's got some good guns. It's got this trophy lodge. Um, even though, I, I mean, we've already filled up a good tad bit of it. But, you know, obviously there's a lot more for us to hunt. And there's a lot more clothing. And, and you got other dogs and, and everything. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun, and I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe. If you did, comment down below what you think about all this. Are you excited? Um, I don't know when the release date is going to be, but I do know that it will be coming out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. So look forward to that. It's going to be pretty fun. No release date, as I said, but yeah, look forward to that, and that's it. Thanks for watching, and as always... Keep gaming, never stop.